Carrollton. Um, my position title has actually just been changed. We're now called Skills Coach Leaders, which is official, but I'm still a manager at the DeKalb County Bowen Center. Bowen Center, a lot of people come in and you think like mental health, this is what you do, so it's therapy and you lay on a couch and I show you ink blots and that's how it goes. And that's really a, such a small portion of what we do and I promise no one has ink blots at our whole office, I promise. So I gave you guys the packet of this as well in case you want to take notes on it or take it home or burn it, whatever you, whatever you want to do, that's really up to you. Um, so I was asked to specifically kind of tailor this to the foundational learning team. So there might be a couple things that aren't added on this. If you have any other questions, contact me afterwards. I have business cards. I have some cool swag for you guys if you want that too. So, um, so Fallen Center actually has a really wide variety of professionals that work for us. All of these might not be located in our office, but we all work very close together throughout all of the offices. Um, so this includes insurance navigators, doctors, psychiatrists, nurse practitioners, licensed outpatient counselors, chemical dependency specialists, and then our rehab service providers, which is a mouthful, so I will refer to them as RSPs. They're gonna be skills coaches soon, but for right now they're RSPs. So it's a lot more than just therapists. I'm gonna make sure that clicks every single time, guys. Um, so our Bowen Center Navigator is something that a lot of people don't know that we offer. There are a lot of families that don't have insurance, and we will link them with insurance. It's a free service that we offer. You can come into our office. We have someone there every other Monday, um, but our office manager is actually a navigator as well. So she can hook you up with insurance. It's a quick questionnaire. You make like a 20 to 40 minute kind of meeting with them, and they'll see what insurance options you have available for you. So people that you're like, oh, I know you don't have health insurance. One, you need it, it's gonna help you on your taxes. And two, it can help you get services that you might need elsewhere just besides going as well. So along with that, um, medication management is a huge part of what we do at Bowen. Um, our DeKalb office does not currently have a doctor's day, but we are hoping to have one soon as we are expanding. So that would mean that we have a doctor and nurse practitioners at our office where we can fill prescriptions, evaluate your medication, meet with your service providers, and meet with the families to figure out what medication you're taking, what medication might help you, where is it working, where is it not, let's evaluate it. And they can fill prescriptions on site at the Fort Wayne office, they have a pharmacy, so we can do things like that as well. Do you get a pharmacist involved with this? Pardon? Do you get a pharmacist, a pharmacist involved with this? Um, in our Fort Wayne office, it's more of just the more common medications. We do still obviously refer to your primary care physician for things like that, um, for bigger medications. So this slide looks super confusing up here and I realized this once I got here, so that's fun, bear with me. Um, this is our rehab service providers, or our RSPs for short. Um, what they do is not just rehabilitation like alcohol and drug rehabilitation. What they do is they take behaviors that are not the best behaviors, they're not really what we want to see, and they change them into what we want to see, what behaviors do we need to rehabilitate back into society to make you a functioning member of society and a positive member of society. Um, and this is done in the next slide, if you guys want to peek ahead, this is done in a huge, huge way. Um, and it's not just one thing that they do. RSPs can be wherever clients need us to be, and they can do whatever clients need us to do. There is really no limit to what an RSP can and cannot do. If you need help with coping skills, we got it. You need help with budgeting, we got it. If you need housing assistance, if you need help finding your insurance, if you need help, and that's more for our recovery works clients that might come in without insurance. Um, if you need help with finding your food stamps, if you need help getting to your doctor, to your dentist, if you have a truancy issue and you're not showing up to school ever, we have literally gone to clients' homes in the morning, helped mom get them out of bed, and drove them to school to get them there on time. And then in the meantime, teaching them the importance of you need to be at school all the time. So there's really, the sky is the limit with what our RSPs can do. Um, the only hang up with RSPs is that they are covered by Medicaid and Medicaid only. So there unfortunately is no private insurance that covers RSP services. But that's what our navigator is for because a lot of people don't know even if they have private insurance, that their child might be eligible for something like CHIP. So a lot of parents don't know that, so they're like, ah, oh, I can't have an RSP, but dang, my kid needs one. We can probably do that. Um, our next slide, which I'll click. 
This is just some of our RSP programs that we offer. Um, I go into a few more of these later, but like I said, the sky is the limit when it comes to what our RSPs can do versus what they can't do. I personally have taken clients to the dentist and held their hand while they had a panic attack because they were getting a cavity filled. It's, there's not anything that they really can't do. Which is no more fun getting it done than it is seeing others get it done. <laughs> you're all under me. Um, licensed outpatient counselors. This is what a lot of people think of when they think of Bowen Center. They think the therapist and we go sit on a couch and here's our hour session. And that's very true to what they do. Um, I would remind people that we are all client-centered. We can't do anything that our client doesn't approve of. Even if it's, we all know that you have an issue with alcoholism, but you came in here not for an alcohol program. If you don't want to work on that, it doesn't go in your treatment plan. We don't work on it. We can't sneak anything in there that people don't know about. We can't be shady, and we don't want to be. So that is very much so the almost cut and dry, here's what our counselors do, which is what you guys all know. Um, one of our more exciting things for this group is our student assistance programs. This program is um, paid for a lot by United Way Power of the Purse Grant, so shout out to them, because <laughs> we love it a lot. Um, this allows, I believe, all DeKalb County students at least two free sessions with Bowen Center for whatever issue that they're having. Medicaid, no Medicaid, insurance, no insurance. The school just has to say, I really am going to refer you through our student assistance program. And you say, all right. They call. They let our access center know, hey, I have a student here from Garrett Kaiser Butler. I want to refer him through the student assistance program. And our access center goes, OK, and it's two free sessions. So you'll come in. We'll talk about what kind of issues are we having. In the meantime, we'll get you hooked up with that navigator if you don't have insurance. If you have insurance, we'll panel you with who is covered under your insurance and you just get the process rolling that way. So it happens a lot faster. So currently, DeKalb Eastern, DeKalb Central, and Garrett Kaiser Butler schools all have SAP programs with us. Um, I touched on this a little bit, but they're super easy to use, the student assistance programs or our SAPs are really simple to use. They call our access department. They can call our office as well, but we'll have to send them through our access department. So it's a step, but it's fine. Um, and they just say, I want to set up my child for the student assistance program through Garrett Kaiser Butler for Bowen Center. And Bowen says, OK, and they get them all signed up. They schedule it right there. They take all the insurance information. You guys don't have to fill out any paperwork on your end. It's very cut and dry stuff. Um, as far as programming goes, we have a lot of programs that run through Bowen that are really beneficial to all of our clients, but this group I know is focusing more on our littler clients, so it's been kind of tailored for that. Um, we have a lot of programs that meet those socio-emotional needs that you guys are looking for. The programs most applicable for this group would be our Social Smarts, our Outstanding Owls, and our Summer Group programs. Social Smarts group is kind of close to my heart. I used to run it. Um, and this is a group that's tailored more for our autism spectrum clients, but it can also be for clients that just have some social needs as well. Um, so this is all evidence-based practices are used in this. It happens once a week. Depending on the age range, it might be Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. The dates change, so bear with me on that one. Um, so anybody who is on the autism spectrum or they're lagging in these social skills, we have um, evidence-based practices such as Think Smart, the Superflex curriculum, the Incredible Flexible U, and all of these target those social skills and teach them that in a group setting. So all of these kiddos come in one-on-one -on -one with an RSP and work with that RSP side-by-side -side in a group setting to get those group behaviors and to learn those social skills. Um, I provided the times on there for you. They're always 3.30 to 5, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, depending on how far along they are with their social skills, how lagging they are in their social skills, and their age range kind of all goes into a factor. Um, Outstanding Owls is a group that is currently not running at DeKalb because we don't have um, enough clients to run it. We only have about two, and we need about four to make a group um, because if one cancels, then it just becomes an individual session, so that's kind of what's going on right now. 
But this is our social skills for littler kids. And really what this is is like a kindergarten prep, almost is what we call it. Outstanding else really has nothing to do with anything. It's not like an acronym, it's just, it's cute. They like it, they like being owls. <laughs> they do. They wanted new animals, so we picked owls, it's fine. Um, so this helps with social skills, following instructions, those active listening skills, asking for help, and expected versus unexpected behaviors in the classroom. So what this does is we take those preschool kids and those kindergarten kids, and we say, here's the behaviors that are okay for classroom, here are the behaviors that are not okay for classroom, let's practice them together. And it's, it's been a very successful group. I'm so sad that it's not running right now. These kids are so cute and they love it so much. So once we get a few more of those clients, this group pops right back up again. And this is usually offered on Fridays because most kids don't have Head Start on Fridays. So we have a morning group and an afternoon group for that. Our summer group programs are one of my favorite things at Bowen because they take place all summer long. As soon as the kids get out of school and until they go back to school, minus like a holiday break for the 4th of July, our summer groups run. And what these teach is a wide range of skills that focus for periods of a time over the entire summer. So these kids will meet twice a week, every summer, every week, um, to go over these different sets of skills. And we pull in people like Purdue Extensions for things like this, um, to teach more specific skills or cool little curriculums like nutrition and things like that. They really loved that. Um, and it's multiple skills, so the social skills, coping skills, independent living, listening skills. We talk about relationships, we talk about responsibility, and it breaks it down. These two weeks we're talking about this, these two weeks we're focusing on this, and it goes through those skills for all of our clients. And that happens the same way as our social smarts group, that each kid has their own RSP and they work individually with that RSP in a group setting. So that way they're getting one-on-one -on -one attention in a group. Our information is really easy to share. Um, anybody can be referred really by anybody for our services. Um, anybody interested can call our access department. They can go ahead and call our local office. They can call my extension directly and we'll all work together to get you set up. And then our last slide here is just different ways to contact Bowen Center. So that's why I wanted you guys to all have this um, in case you don't see me to grab a business card. Our access department might take them through a little bit of a longer prompt. It's what we send all of our first time clients to, so don't be surprised if you give us their information, we contact them or they contact us and we refer them to the access department. It just kind of has to run through that way. But they can call our office directly or they can call myself directly and we can get them hooked up with the services that they need. Are there any questions? Yeah, yes. um, this um, OWLS program, um, uh, how do you measure the progress of the, of the clients in this program if they're, if they're going to be ready for kindergarten and, mm -hmm. and, and moving into school? And is that information shared with the schools that they may be going into? So, so schools are aware of yes. where they are in their progress and if, you know, yes. if there needs to be further intervention by the school. Yes. What we do for that, because we're all client-centered, each client gets their own treatment plan. And so the goals that that RSP is working with directly with that child one-on-one -on -one will tie right to that treatment plan. Because we're bound by HIPAA, we can't report, like they've made this much progress to the school and they're ready to go into kindergarten because we're bound by HIPAA. So we can't tell everybody that. If they sign a release of information, we can say, here are the skills we've been working on, here's the progress that we've made, Here's where they're lagging a little bit, but it's not an official, they're ready to go to kindergarten or no, pull them back a year. It's just that personal growth in progress. Yes. Are, are there any fees associated with those summer groups? No. Um, the summer group programs, because they are all um, led by our RSPs, they are only covered under Medicaid, unfortunately, um, which is again when we would pair people with our insurance navigator to see if they qualify for any type of Medicaid or CHIP. So that way we can get them the Medicaid rehab option underneath that Medicaid. So is that the only way they go to the program then if they're under Medicaid? Yes. Okay. Yes. So they're not allowed to even if they could pay. Yes. Um, we do have um, some kiddos like through DCS that might not have Medicaid, but DCS is paying for them, okay. and they come to these programs okay. as well. Yes. 
talk about transportation, like some of the summer programs and stuff. That's a fantastic question that I forgot to mention. I'm so glad you brought it up. Our RSPs provide all transportation for all groups. So we will never make parents, you know, bring them to the group. Parents are more than welcome to bring them to the group. We have some that are just a little not ready to let them go into a stranger's car yet, which is really great most times. Um, but we provide all transportation, both to and from that, and all other appointments as well, whether they're Bowen appointments or not. I may want to touch base with you on the outstanding owls and how possibly we could partner maybe with like a family engagement night for KQ. That would be fantastic. Yes, ma'am, that would be good. Well, if anybody has any other questions, um, I can. I have business cards if you guys want that, or my information is conveniently on the back of this slide that you all got. Um, but that has my email on it as well. Um, so, and you guys, I can give you my personal cell phone if you'd rather just text me directly. Um, and I'm available anytime to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Christina Brockhouse, and I am the executive director at Children First Center here in DeKalb County. And we not only serve DeKalb County, we serve, and I always have to be my county when I do our counties, and we serve five counties. So we do Whitley, Allen, Noble, DeKalb, and Stubent. So we serve five counties, but our office is housed here in DeKalb County. Um, so we work with a lot of different community foundations, a lot of communities to, first of all, see what each community really needs. Um, we always say we are not a community mental health center, and we, we defer to Bowen or Northeastern Center for a lot of those groups and things like that that people are needing. Um, we are more focused on fighting and combating child abuse and neglect. All of our programs are designed as prevention programs for child abuse and neglect. Um, some of those are prevention and some of those are reactive programs. So we have both. I'm gonna start with our video and let that tell you a little bit about us and then I will come up here and finish. I've been with Healthy Families for six months. They come to my house every week. We work on developmental skills, motor skills, and they bring me papers of community help that I can receive and activities to do with my eight-month-old and my two-year-old. I didn't know how to help my son crawl. He wasn't wanting to do it at all, and she showed me some different things to do to help him crawl, to move, and to not just sit there. She comes in, talks to us if we have problems, she offers to help, and I can call her if I need any information about anything. I was a part of the Healthy Families program for all three years with my child, Katie. I had Gabby, who's one of the family support workers, come and visit with us um, during my three years with Healthy Families. She really helped to focus in on developmental skills with my child, um, giving me special activities I could do with her to help promote the development and making sure she was on track. 
and meeting all those milestones that she needed to meet. My name is Crystal Adcox. I've received services from Children First Center for four years now. My therapist has helped me to identify things where I could use um, help emotionally or improve myself emotionally. I don't think I'd be able to uh, have the composure that I have with people and my own composure without the services here and I really enjoyed being able to connect with myself and learning how to connect with other people better. I really recommend this facility to anybody, even just to improve your everyday life. I have enjoyed it here and I think it's a really great place to be. So it highlighted a little bit of our programs. Like I said, our, um, we have some preventative programs and we have some reactive programs. Our preventative program is Healthy Families and that is a zero through three program where families have a worker that goes in initially, it's every week, and work with them on development, on parenting skills, um, we do lots of assessments to make sure that they don't need any further referrals to maybe first steps or some other type of programs. Um, we monitor their immunization records to make sure they're getting in and getting their child shots. Um, we give them referrals to pretty much wherever they need in the community. That is, a, it gradually steps down. Initially, the first year, it is weekly visits in their home for about an hour. Um, if a family needs additional support, we can go in there and provide additional support. Sometimes that's two visits a week. Sometimes um, one of our therapists goes in and meets with that family if they need that kind of support. Um, and then eventually they go down to every other week and then eventually they get to once a month. Um, fortunately and unfortunately, a lot of our families never get to that once a month because some, so many of them need support. A lot of times our workers go in there and they're the only person that goes in that home or has been in that home from week to week that is encouraging that parent, helping that parent understand their child and their child's needs, why their child cries, why the child does different things. So a lot of times we never get to that once a month, which, um, like I said, it's kind of a blessing and a curse, but we are, our workers have such wonderful relationships with the families that they serve, and it's really a great program. Um, that is our preventative side and then we have a reactive side which is called HOME and that stands for helping others meet expectations and most of those referrals do come in through DCS. So DCS provides a referral because they have a family that is either at risk of losing their children or has lost their children and they need some additional support. Most of those again are home-based services um, as you can see from our facility, we do have a wonderful facility that United Way and the Community Foundation help us update and get new furniture and churches came in and helped paint it because what's really important to us is that when a family comes into our facility that it's like a home. That as you can see from our rooms, they have kitchens in them, they have family style dining, they have living rooms, they have toys, age appropriate toys. because. These kids have already been removed from their homes. They've experienced trauma. We want it to be a safe environment that feels like home. And when they come in there, they know that it is going to be safe. And it's got nice colors, and it's got just anything that you could have in your home. What we love about our facility is that, you know, so many times when a family's doing a supervised visitation, if it's not in their home or it's in the community, it's really hard to see when you're working with a parent on those parenting skills, how are they developing those? Are they working? You know, when you're in a five by five room, it's pretty easy to redirect a child and I um, don't say easy because it's not easy, but um, easier to maybe redirect or talk about what you could do at mealtime. But when you're in our facility, you can really see that we don't allow food outside of this certain area and you have to sit down and eat. And some of our visits are six and seven hours. So families can bring meals, they can make meals together, they can make cookies, they can do things like that. So we really pride ourselves on the fact that when people are in our facility, it's a home environment and um, they can feel safe there. Our home program offers also a therapeutic piece. We have five full-time therapists, which compared to a lot of community mental health centers isn't very much, but um, three years ago when I became executive director, I was the only therapist and in three years we have had, we have five additional. 
So that program, again, is most of those are DCS referred. They come in through DCS, and many of them are home-based or community-based where we go meet in their homes because a lot of our families, you know, let's face it, when you're worried about basic needs and how you're going to get to the grocery store and how you're going to pay for your food and how you're going to get your kids to school, the last thing you're caring about is your mental health. The last thing that you are putting on the, as a priority is your mental health, sadly. And so we go to those homes. We go to those homes with those people and um, provide our services. So that way they don't have to worry about transportation. Many times we're doing a therapeutic visit with children crawling, crawling, crawling around on the floor or there, um, just so that they can have a therapeutic component to their life so that they can parent the way they need to parent and um, get additional support. Uh, with that program, we work very closely with DCS and all the counties that we serve. We have certain therapists that are in different counties, and so that way they can really integrate into DCS and know what the needs are. Um, so we, again, we really value our relationship with them and with DCS and making sure that we're meeting the needs of the family. Another component to our home program is also um, what's called the Nurturing Parent. And that is a, an evidence-based nurturing parenting program that is um, a 12, it's, it's designed to be about 12 visits, but some of those uh, sessions we have to break up, so it can be up to 24 sessions if we need it to be. And that really helps. One of the complaints, common complaints about parenting groups is that, you know, I have a 12 year old and I'm going to a parenting group and they're talking about doing timeouts and that just isn't working with my 12 to 15 year old and so <laughs> what can I do to help with my child, my adolescent child that I'm struggling with and so we designed, that, that curriculum is designed to meet the needs of where your child is at and it talks all about brain development and um, it goes through different ways to help in with your immediate needs, not with the needs of maybe a toddler or how well if I could have started this five years ago, that would be really great, but now, you know, I really can't put my 15-year-old 180-pound child into a timeout. And um, so what the other thing that's great about that program is that it's they do a test after each one of the modules and they're able to say, how am I going to use this? with my child. How am I gonna how am I gonna incorporate this into our daily life? So it's not just I'm learning and I'm gonna go home and I may or may not try this. They really can talk about how they're going to incorporate that with their child. We also provide um, shake and baby prevention training and that's at all of our counties also and we go into schools and we talk about the dangers of shaking a child. We work with a lot of adolescent kids that are about sixth grade. So that way we can, you know, they're going to be the ones that are going to be babysitting soon or going to have younger siblings. And so we get the education early about the dangers of shaking a child. We do those in a lot of our prenatal classes and um, throughout the county and um, different homeless shelters just so that, and in the jails, so that people can get that information out there. Um, at Children First Center, like I said, we are, we only have about 32 employees. We are a very small organization, but we are very integrated in the community. We are in a lot of different groups so that we know what the community needs are, and we're focusing on that all the time and trying to direct our services to meet those needs of the community and, and how we can best address those. So we're always looking at different ideas, and we, um, a lot of times people say, how are you growing? Well, a lot of times we're not really growing in programming, we're just growing in our knowledge and really trying to make all of our programs the most effective that they can be. So we spend a lot of our energy saying, what more can we do to enhance this program instead of creating some more programs? Um, our facility is over behind the hospital and um, as far as school-based kids, um, we do obviously work with a lot of children who are involved with DCS. Um, so we go into schools, uh, not always, and I don't think the Cal State Bowl allows us in some of the schools, but, um, or in, I don't think Garrett does either. I think they're a little bit, you know, sometimes we have been in the schools, but we do try to work with the kids sometimes in the schools, and we, I know that the big thing for educators is they don't want to take away from that education time, but sometimes the kids are struggling so much in the school that it is helpful for our therapists and our workers to go into the school and see, really see what's going on and help them there in the school. Um, Training other school-based, if I get it directed to that. 
like I said, we do do our shake and baby in the schools also, and that is a huge demand to go into those health classes and do that. As a matter of fact, the last three years we have ran out of funding and had to go elsewhere for funding, so that's a really great program in the schools also. Any questions about Children's Health Center? How are you funded then completely through welfare or uh, Medicaid? Is no. Okay. Um, our, our, we are state federally funded and grants and fundraising and all of those things. Um, most of our programs are paid for on our home side by DCS, but we also, if we, as I mentioned, like the Shaken Baby and um, the nurturing program, and those run out of funding because we get the funding for those through local prevention dollars through SCAN in Allen County, and so when those run out, we do continue to do those programs, even if we're not getting reimbursed for those. That's what we use our grant raising and our fundraising to cover those. We do also have private pay that people come in and say, you know, I need a therapist. It, I heard that this person's really great. And so we do have a private pay element. All of our programs, aside from healthy families, can be paid for privately. Healthy families is focused more on um, families that are in a 125% poverty level and um, but that doesn't mean that that's the only thing that that would exclude them if they weren't if they have mental health problems if they have um, if they're isolated if they have multiple children if they have a previous um, substantiation for child abuse and neglect that also would allow them in that program um, for the families that are participating in the healthy families program do you have a bit of turn, I mean, I'm sure you have some, but what's the turnover like? Or are families staying within the program for the three year span roughly? And what does that look like? Um, right now, we are really focused on trying to keep, if they stay past the six months, they stay usually in for the first three years. Our drop off points are about that six months, which a lot of research shows is, mm -hmm. you know, after six months after the baby's born, that there's a little disconnection there with services that a parent involves themselves in. So we have gotten grants from different places to give some incentive to keep them in the past six months. I would say that, like anything else, that relationship with the worker is just fundamental for keeping them in there. And so we work with our workers on training on having good, building good relationships and keeping those relationships and outreach and how to make the most impact. So that's what we're always looking at is how can we keep those people in there past the six months, which I would say, I mean, I'm just kind of pulling this out of the air based on what I know. I don't have a hard and fast number, but I would say about 75% of the people that enter stay in for the, the whole three years. Right now, we just did a statistic that um, as I was walking out, because we're right in the middle of a site review for our Healthy Families program, that 89% of people who are say they want the program and go get an assessment do ask for the program and keep the program for at least that first six months. Um, yeah, I did. Uh, the Nurturing Parent Program, what are those criteria for mm -hmm. participation? Um, there's really no criteria. You just have to refer yourself or someone else can refer you. You don't have to be a certain financial acceptance. There's no financial acceptance. I mean, like you can be any financial, I can't, my brain's not, um, <laughs> Wherever you, how much ever money you make, you can make it. Um, so it doesn't matter how much money you make, you can do that program. And as long as you say this is that you want it and refer yourself. And ages of children? Zero to 18. Wow. How do they contact you? They can either contact us through our website or they can just call the office, which both those numbers are on here. Okay. And how is that funded? See the local okay. prevention dollars. Okay. That's good. Yes, it is. But there was recently a cut in those, you know, as we know through DCS, there was a cut in those dollars. So we are just about depleted, but we will keep running any, any, uh, any, any that's, we're going to keep running that program and we're going to look at outside funding for that. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So hopefully you had a chance to um, kind of take some notes on for your setting, your specific um, view or perspective, the plus and the 
kind of the changes that might occur with the two services, which was very interesting for me, especially with Children's First, I didn't know a lot of that, so that was really great. You guys have any questions about that? So our purpose kind of is to continue to kind of gather information and if we, we continue to kind of be a link, you know, and thinking about where you come from and those kinds of things and thinking about the services that we're going to hear about, which leads us to our next meeting, the community meeting, uh, the annual community, community meeting. It's not the 13th. Should I explain? Yeah, but it's not. <laughs> okay. But I don't uh, think it's Friday the 13th. No, it is. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I put on there toward the bottom, there are two meetings. Oh, associated with the Community Foundation. Okay. We've got a Learning Link Community Meeting on April 24th. But on April 13th, there's also um, our Community Foundation Annual Meeting. And I just wanted to mention that we're doing something different this year. We're having a grant off, which is a little competition for um, grant present grantee presentations. And the, uh, the Community Foundation has allocated like $6,000 that we'll be giving away. And it'll be decisions made by both grant committee members and as well as audience members who attend. So if that's a jam center and everybody is welcome to attend on April 13th. You'll probably get an invitation. I'm sure you'll get an invitation. Mm -hmm. And then the annual meeting that we have is going to be Tuesday, April 24th. And so because of that, I think we had Monday the 23rd was going to be when we were going to meet again. We thought that probably having two meetings that week was a little bit counterproductive to our work. So we have put down Monday, April 16th, okay, instead. And what we're hoping to do is ask the JAM Center and then the ECA to come in and talk with us um, and to present their programming. And so this will be on Monday, April 16th, and we're going to be meeting at J.E. Over. Does that work okay? Yep. Okay. Does that make sense? <coughs> Some special arrangements. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which door will be Right now, it's going to be door two. Door two? Yeah, but I'll verify. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, any questions about that? Why don't we kind of change the dates a little bit on that, just so that we weren't meeting twice? And then on April 24th, um, our agenda is mm -hmm. going to look a little bit different. Mm -hmm. We'll be um, hearing team reports. So we'll want to report from this team, the foundational team, and the um, continual learning team. And those are only expected to be five, five to seven minutes each report. And since the foundational team has two targets that we're working on, that even shortens the report time. Um, and then uh, I think we're going to do a panel presentation um, about a topic that has really surfaced is multi-generational understanding. And this came out of the um, continual learning team. They want to bring up the topic and probably address a few critical questions for five minutes each. And these will be, um, one of the people that will be talking is Marcus Carlson, who has his doctorate in adolescent development, and he is a pastor at St. Mark's. Another person that will talk five minutes is Joe Pounds from the Depo Foundation. That's his area too. And then we'll have somebody uh, from an HR and a workplace, big issue there. It is a big issue. And then we'll have a couple educators, early learning, We'd like an early learning educator to present for five minutes. And, and there will be more, more direction to those five-minute presentations. And then some uh, small group discussion. And what we're trying to do is figure out what the community might be interested in hearing something in depth about. Because we didn't really know. It's such a huge topic. And uh, when you think about six generations, in play today, and five in many workplaces, um, it, it presents some communication um, challenges, let's put it that way. So this is about understanding across the generations. 
So that's the community, the semi-annual community meeting on April 24th. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts or around the structure? Those were the four top, I think. So after an April, we'll have to kind of look at the list and see if anything else surfaced as far as what we want to do as a learning group. So. Okay, that's it. Yes. Can I a quick announcement, please? For those of you who have not seen our flyer from the Children's Summit that we are that I'm in collaboration with, the United Methodist Church and James Foundation and we have some people from the Cal Central and DCS that there is, we did last year we put on um, a summit and Antoine Fisher came and spoke, if any of you were there. We're going to have another one in, on April 11th and that is again going to be at the United Methodist Church and it's going to be Dr. Vincent Valetti who is going to be speaking this year, who his specialty is the ACEs. And um, there's also going to be, and I feel terrible because I don't have her name off the top of my head. Um, she's going to talk about technology and how it affects children. And so it should be a pretty great day, free lunch. The, yeah, who has the flyers for that, do you know? Um, I can get them to you if you would like me to. Yeah. You can register at childrenfirstcenter.org. Is it an all-day event? All-day event. Well, 9 to 3. 9 to 3. And cost free, free. Whoa. And tell me what Dr. Vincent Paletti's last name? P A F E I L T I, I believe. Close enough, yeah. I'll find it. <laughs> and we had talked about ACES in this. We did at one time. So. That was one of the, the ACES survey was one of the surveys, excuse me, I think that I showed you early on when we were trying to kind of figure out what it was that we were hoping to accomplish. So, you know, did we want to identify a survey for social and emotional? And we decided to go a different route, but that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I could send the flyer to you if you uh -huh. want to send it. And I'll share it with okay. everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, our county does not have marketing materials yet. We're waiting on those to be delivered by the states. Um, they can, if you have interested families that have qualifying four-year-olds, um, 127 poverty level, a service need of both parents need to be working and or in school. Um, and they have to be four by August 1st. Um, it's a program of free pre-K from Cal Central, the Y and the GM Center and hopeful for Garrett Kaiser Butler Head Start as well. Um, so if you want, if families need more information, they can call 211 or go to the On My Way Pre-K website. And it's uh, poverty level is 127. 127 percent. Yep. yep. I think the sticking point we discovered is that the parents either have to be in school or they have to prove that they're not employed, right? Or that they're below that, or they're five hundred twenty-seven. They have to have both. Both. Yep. So, so both cool. parents that are living in the home have to be working and or in school. To, um, the reason for that is we've attached the state funds that we had for On My Way Pre-K in the first qualifying um, counties. So this year they've attached um, CCDF funds to that as well. So those federal funds um, make that service need a must. And that is where our barrier is going to be finding those families. Yep. Yeah, and we have made arrangements uh, with Ivy Tech. Um, they are willing, so one class counts as being in school, and yes. Ivy Tech would run a class here. Yes. Very appropriate for these young mothers mm -hmm. um, or fathers. Yeah, yep. young mothers or fathers. Mm -hmm. And um, if we had 10 people willing to enroll in that course, uh, they will bring the class to, uh, to Cal County. So before you leave, I have Garrett Museum of Art, you know, their fine arts camp is going on again uh, this summer, and Deborah Gass asked me to share these with you. So it's the same thing in two formats, two on a page and one on a page. I'll just set them here, and you can help yourself. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in.